Hey guys, I am a little nervous about talking about this subject as I'm not a good talker uh, or reader for that matter. Uh, but so I promised I'd do this, so here it is. Um, I'm talking about the ram's horn today. You ram's horns comes in all uh, sizes. Um, you see little ones about this yay big, medium sized ones, and then you get these big ones, which uh, I like the bigger ones just because I like the way it sounds more. It's a little bit more full. Um, but, uh, I bought this in Israel when I went, if you ever have a chance to go to Israel, I want to encourage you to go. Um, so the way that my mind works is that I always wonder why, why things? So why a ram's horn? There are other animals out there with, with horns that they could have used. So I wanted to, um, talk to you and tell you the story that you is very familiar to us all and may be not familiar to you. So I'm going to read the whole thing out of Genesis uh, 22. So uh, it's one of my most favorite stories as a young kid growing up. Um, and, and the older I get, the more I find uh, little nuggets in it. Uh, so I wanna read the whole thing to you so uh, you get a full context of what, what's happened here and why uh, it's a ram's horn. Uh, now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And then he said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and rose and went to a place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw a place afar off. And Abraham said to his son, Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey and the lad and I will go yonder and worship and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to a place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an offer there, altar there and, and placed the wood in order. And, his, and he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called, him from heaven, called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, "Do not lay a hand on your lad. Do not lay a hand on the lad, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me." Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as, it's, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing, blessing, I will bless you and multiply, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars in the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall uh, possess the gates of their enemy. In your seed, all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So that is the story of why we blow the ram's horn. It's all because of Abraham's obedience. It is a reminder 
of, of the sacrifice that Abraham was willing to give and God's mercy and his provision. So there are four different types of blasts. So um, the ram's horn is blown at synagogue for Rosh Hashanah and every day during Yule. The that is the Hebrew month that precedes Rosh Hashanah. It is also blown at the conclusion of Yom Kippur. Uh, there are three types of blasts that are very uh, that people use. Uh, actually, there's four. Um, so, Tekiah is the blast. It's a one long note and acts as some as a kind of summons. Others suggest that it is the sound of the king's coronation. On Rosh Hashanah, we traditionally call to reaffirm God's sovereignty. Once again, thinking back to the story and the reason why it's a ram's horn is we're proclaiming God's sovereignty and his provision in our life. The second um, blast is pronounced Shiva Rim. Uh, this word literally means breaks or fractures. Um, the Shiva Rim blast is three medium length notes that have been compared to the sound of weeping. That's powerful when you start to think about it. The third blast is tirua, tirua. Uh, the tirua blast is a series of very short staccato sounds that have been compared to an urgent alarm, calling us to, uh, to arise from our spiritual slumber. Wow. These three blasts are sounds in various combinations during the shofar service of a Rosh Hashanah. Uh, they are traditionally concluded with long, one long um, great tekiah, which is a similar to, to the long blast of, of the first blast. It's just a longer one for tekiah. Uh, tekiah gedura. Uh, is the is the fourth blast and it's just a long one and it just basically means it's finished it's done so i'm going to show you uh the first blast is sounds like this that is uh tekia the second blast is uh shivarim which is the breaking and the fracturing and it sounds like weeping medium notes the third blast is tira, ta, tirua, which is uh, the staccato sounding, very short alarm sounding to help the church arise and awake from its slumber. <laughs> So that is the tirua. Uh, uh, the third, the fourth blast is just a long uh, tukia blast, which means it's finished. So that is the story behind the shofar. There's a couple things that I want to point out about the story of Abraham. When you look into Genesis 22, a lot of people forget that, uh, that there was another son that Abraham took uh, the powers that be uh, to create another son. Um, and, he, and his name was, uh, uh, you guys know his name. I can't, it just slipped my mind. Wow. Um, Ishmael. And Ishmael was his first son, but as you can see, God did not even recognize Ishmael. He kept calling uh, Isaac his only son. And now Ishmael was the older son, obviously, uh, because he uh, was uh, born first, obviously. But um, looking into the story, um, if you look at the Hebrew word, word yachid, 
it means the an all an only one, an only child, a precious life. Yachid comes from Yachid describes Abraham, a uh, unique miracle child, Isaac. Zechariah describes what the Messiah will one day become to Israel's repentant, weeping citizens. A previous only son, in Zach and you can find that in Zechariah 12.10. Here the place where God told Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac is the same place where God sacrificed his own son. The hill of Moriah in Jerusalem. A lot of people don't realize that the same mountain that Abraham took Isaac to sacrifice his only son is the same mountain otherwise known as Golgotha. Equally noted, it is the phrase his only begotten son in John 3.16 in the new in the in the Hebrew New Testament, his son, his Yachid his only son. So it's important to realize the significance. There's always a reason why God does things. Um, and everything ties back to the Old Testament. If you're reading through the New Testament, you can pretty much find where it stems from in the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, when we see Jesus being crucified on Golgotha, God gave his only begotten son. Um, it's the same mountain that I that Isaac was going to be crucified on. Another thing that people don't realize is that Isaac was about 30 years old when um, when Abraham took him up and bound him. So there's there's more of a story there as well, not only just for Abraham's obedience, but for Isaac's obedience as well to 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 obey his father in such a manner to allow himself to be bound, allow himself to be laid on the altar so that he can be sacrificed. I mean, a 30-year-old man is going to, uh, nowadays, if that were to happen, uh, the 30-year-old man would probably think his, his father's psychotic or something, um, laying him down and saying, oh, the Lord's going to provide. By the way, let me bind you and lay you down as this burnt offering. Isaac knew the traditions. He knew what needed to be done to that, um, to that lamb or that ram uh, to be sacrificed. Uh, there's a, there is, a, um, there is a, a process that needs to happen for those uh, sacrifices. The blood needs to go out. To the, the you know the innards need to come out. They, there's a whole process to that thing. I don't want to get into that today, but um, Isaac was, was knew what needed to be done for an offering, and he willingly allowed his father to bind him um, and lay him down on the altar and be willing to kill him. Um, that just says more about the story of Christ as well. It's a foreshadowing of Christ, um, not to idolize Isaac but I mean that that's just uh, that's just amazing how uh, God sent his son Jesus into this world to sacrifice him and he followed through with it so that we could have eternal life because he was the spotless lamb of God so that's all I have for you today um, is, is I hope that blesses you and um, sorry it's so short but as I as you know I'm, I'm kind of right to the point type of a of a guy. So um, those are the four sounds of the shofar. I want to encourage you, get one, blow it, blow it correctly, blow it for the reasons we need to. And I would suggest to keep blowing the uh, tirua, uh, the short blasts to awaken our spiritual um, slumber. This nation needs it. We need it in our lives. Uh, to be awakened, to awaken our souls, to awaken our hearts and minds to what God has called us to be so that we can rise up and be the children of God, to be the salt and the light in this earth. Uh, so God bless you guys, and I will see you uh, next time.